Hello everyone, welcome back to the stream. Um, it's time to do more work on that beaded brooch that I started last week. Um, I did some stuff in the meantime. As you can see, I finished the embroidery down here at the bottom. Um, I also did the sky. And last week someone in the chat pointed out that the, the two stars and the sort of the wave of the cloud or whatever it is Kind of, were kind of looking like a face and I couldn't unsee it so it was bothering me too much and I put two little silver beads to make it look a little bit less like a face. Hi Yukimiko, welcome back to the stream. Um, I also filled in with grey the entire like surface of the moon and I did a little bit of additional embroidery, uh, not embroidery, sorry, beadwork um, around the large cabochon. Like I built up some layers it's, it doesn't focus particularly well, but basically I added some beads on top of the previous beads so that it's a bit more enclosed instead of just sitting around it. It's a little bit uneven because I also attached it to some of the beads that were around the edge originally. Like, it was not, not planned to go that way, but I feel that it does look better, so I'm happy that I did it. So I changed my mind about a couple of things. In the past week, uh, one of them is this um, this edge. I didn't like it when I embroidered it, and I also think that it might look significantly better if it's made with the same beads that the rest of the edge is made of. So I think I'm going to start today by taking out this white line and just replacing it with more beads. Um, and then I also want to weave some additional thread through the entire edge, just to sort of pull them into a straight line a bit better because they're a little bit wobbly here and there. And then uh, we got to work on um, getting the um, the LED and the wiring sorted on the back. So there will be a little bit of soldering at some point. But I'm going to just start with removing this. Uh, there's a slight problem in the sense that I was trying to sort of pull it into the center and so I stitched a bunch of the other embroidery threads right over the top of it. So I think I'm just going to snip them all, all the stitches from the front, and then just sort of pry them out. And I hope it's going to work out, so let's start with that. Just take out all of these white embroidery threads and replace them with beads. Also, I'm going to try very hard not to hit any of the other embroidery nearby, because that would be sad. I think mm, the pulling that I'm having to do here is probably not good for the fabric, so let's snip it where I can. I couldn't find my good tiny scissors, so this is what I've got now. Hey, welcome back, Joe, for something something. It is looking pretty good. Like, I have to say, at the end of last week, I wasn't entirely convinced that it was going to turn out to be anything halfway decent. But now that I've filled in the rest of the embroidery and the moon and stuff, it's looking better. Yes, the chunky scissors. The fabric scissors that will cut through anything you want. Well... It, they will cut through anything you want, but it's not recommended to make them cut through anything you want, but I think they should be fine with this. I also, I do have small scissors, like these ones, but they're kind of sucky small scissors, so I think I'm better off with these. So, this one thread doesn't seem to want to get cut. There we go. So hopefully I'll be able to finish this today. Yeah, I, I started with the seam ripper, but it was pulling quite hard on the felt, and I am not, um, 
I feel like since that has to be the edge of the brooch when I cut it out, I didn't want to pull too much on that. So, so let's see if I can now completely pull it out of the back. Because this is a mess. So I stitched over it a bunch of times trying to sort of pull it in all. But, um. Yeah, no worries. Yeah. Just being careful so that when I cut it out, I won't regret it. Oh, that white might actually not need to come out. I think some of the white that I was pulling on is actually that top edge. No, wait, I used gray for that. What? I'm not entirely sure what's what. I'm just gonna take out the stuff that will move quite easily on its own. And then see what's left. Oh, I hate myself. I stitched through this with a different thread several times. <laughs> This is what you get for changing your mind halfway through. I think I got that. Good. So what have you been up to in the past week? Made anything? Oh dear, I've literally stitched straight through the middle of this thread. Working on a needlebook? Oh, I saw that, uh, is it the thing during COVID? I think someone did a, a video on making a needlebook. Are you making that one or are you doing a different one? All right, nearly there. Started pulling out a bunch of fabric and making children's costumes. Ooh. Aw, that's awesome. So you're a teacher? You're making it up as you go along. Oh, that sounds good. Alright, so I got all the white edge out. I'm gonna just, um... Like, there, I can see through the felt where I, where the stitches were. 
So I'm a little bit worried about the structural integrity. But uh, let's see how it goes. I want to just remark where the um, the edge is supposed to be, just to make sure I get it nice and crisp. Something like this. So before I started, I starched the felt, and I feel like that's come out to such a degree that it's barely noticeable anymore. But I think if I'm ever doing this again, I'm ordering some of that like proper stuff. There is a sort of felt like backing exactly for this kind of beadwork. Seems a lot better. So I'm going to try to just continue that bead edge um, instead of the, uh, another rub, yeah. What exactly is the difference between a teacher and a child educator? Alright. Let's do this. Um, I'm gonna get a good length of the fire line because I also wanna, when I finish this, I wanna go through all the other beads to sort of pull them, I don't know, pull them into a straight line. I don't know, maybe child educator is a separate thing. And I'm just unaware of the concept. So let's try to thread this. It's a little rough because the needle is so tiny. Did I get it? I, I got it. Okay. Let's write a little knot in the end and then we can get going. Uh, I'm also Got a plan to reinforce the edges. Teacher sees the children in class. Do it in the caretaking system. Oh, okay. So you're not in a school. Oops. Uh, what I was saying is I've got a plan with, this is a bottle of fray check. And I think that before I cut the whole thing out, I'm going to just soak the edge of the entire thing in fray check just to make sure stuff doesn't pull out of the edge. I'm a little bit paranoid about that happening. I should... okay. Putting these on the glass table was a mistake. They're jumping everywhere when I try to pick them up. I have a bit of felt here still. There we go. That should be better. You're in school, but not part of the curriculum. Ah, oh, sure. Okay, so here we go. 
for real this time. Already they don't want to sit nicely. What did I sign up for? <laughs> that no what the needle is actually going through the center of a bead where it's not supposed to hold on stop doing that so i also worked a little bit on the waistcoat this week I will admit that I did not do that much on it, but I've prepared the welt pocket at least. Like I've figured out where I wanted to go and cut out the pieces. So if I have time left over at the end of finishing this, I guess that's what I'm gonna do. Put in the welt pocket. Figured that would be mildly educational. I think I know what I'm doing, but it's one of those things that can turn out pretty garbage just by looking at it wrong, so. <laughs> yes, they are. Well, I, uh, I only decided on one pocket, like a tiny one, sort of. Since it's on a waistcoat, you know, you need some space for your pocket watch or whatever, but not much else. So it's a teensy, teensy pocket. But it looks nice. At least I hope it will look nice when it's done. I keep going up through the bead where I don't want to. Yeah, exactly. My my the pocket watch that I don't have will go very nicely in there. And also the lipstick I don't wear and the uh I don't know. If it's not big enough for a phone, is it really a pocket? Wow, I stitched right through the fishing line. I'm kind of impressed by the sharpness of the needle here. Like through the middle of this tiny line. Some phones are huge, yeah, I know. It's uh I have a I guess normal sized smartphone, but those things have gotten larger and larger over the years as well, so Oop. I did this on a mouse pad when I was doing the um, the extra beads on the large cabochon, and it was way nicer than this. I should probably make that a permanent thing. See how it's wobbling? And I think some of it is because of just uneven. No, I'm not sure you can see that. This, this bead, this one, is misbehaving. I think it's because some of them are just sort of more tight than others. 
my... So what I hope to achieve by weaving through the whole thing is that that will all sort of get pulled into place. I think I'm nearly there. It's going faster than I thought. And immediately as you say that you get tangled. That's how that works. Don't get cocky, says the universe. No, I'm getting stuck in the fibers of the felt. <laughs> Jeez. Ow. I think we've got about four beads to go before the end of this. I think that should get us right to the end. Oh, it fits so nicely. I wonder how they, like, I've been watching those um, bead weaving stuff videos, and they will stitch around a cabochon and then do the layer on top. But for that to fit properly, you need an even number of beads. So what do you do if you... I don't think you count out exactly how many can fit around the cabochon, right? That would be excessive. I don't know. Alright, I'm gonna go through all the beads. 
and then back here, and then back up there as well, I think. To try to keep them all nicely aligned. Fortunately, this is a lot faster than doing it the first time. But here, some of them have gotten a little bit pulled out of place because I was doing the weaving on top. So that's going to be a bit of wiggling to get those back down. I don't think they're going to come back down entirely. I just want them to be not quite as wiggly as they are now. Oh, I'm also gonna... I've already gone through the bottom of the... well, depending on how you look at it, the bottom of the moon. Um, but not along the top yet. I had, had only enough wire on my needle to go through one side, so... I'm just gonna go through the top arch as well. Uh, I guess after that I'm still gonna go through the bottom arch again so I can make my way back to where I was uh, going around the outer edge. If, if I can still make it through, because it's getting quite... <laughs> There's already two bits of line going through those beads. It feels a bit cramped when I try to push the needle through again, but... I don't know, it seems to work so far. It's not too bad. Just trying not to catch any of the embroidery as I poke the needle through. All right, and made it out the other side. Just gonna pull this tight a little bit. Ooh, it's actually working. So I just pulled on it and it's now taking on kind of a, a cup shape. As you see, it's becoming slightly three-dimensional because I'm pulling the entire edge tight. That's a bit much, but at least it means that it's kind of working. So now I'm going to work my way to the top edge and then, I don't know, all the way back to where I stopped. 
I think that'll be it. I also spotted a kind of smudgy bead up here somewhere. I think it's got, like, this is a, a slightly darkened glass with some silver-colored coating on the inside. And this, this one bead also has some silver on the outside. It looks kind of crappy, but I'm definitely not taking apart the whole thing to get him out, so... I'll just have to deal with it. But I think I've said this already, if... Anyone gets close enough to notice that, they're probably too close. This is, I do think that the entire edge looks way smoother where I've run an extra thread through it, right? Just from a distance, it looks way more crisp. It's like the face mask. Yeah, exactly. If you can spot this, you are too close. Actually, uh, way before the pandemic, I already seen some t-shirts with just really tiny letters on them saying, if you can read this, you are too close. You know, people like personal space. Seriously though, I, I think it, this has done a lot to smooth out the edge. I really like it. I'm gonna do this inside arch as well, and then I'm going to call it a day. I'm going to just quickly stitch into the felt so I don't pull this back in. Yeah, exactly. I am... I am totally in favor of items of clothing that encourage people to give you your personal space. There's one bead here, especially here in the corner, that just doesn't seem to want to go where I want it to. And I know it's because I, like, I screwed it up when I added a teeny tiny bead here in the corner to go around the cabochon. That's, that's what pushed that bead out of where he should be. So, you know, I did it and now I'm acting like it's the bead's fault or something. So, I apologize for the injustice, but I'm still upset. You went through the beads up to eight times? Wow. That must also just take forever to get it done. Just so many actions per bead, so to speak. All right. Wow, it looks so much smoother. It's crazy. Like, seriously. I'm, I'm gonna have to do some, like, before and after pictures of this because it's not perfect, but it's so much better. I really like it. All right. So I'm going to just go through and fix it on the back. And then I'm going to do that um, 
experiment where I soak the entire edge in fray check in the hopes that that will make my life easier when I cut out the circle. Because this felt is not intended for things to be pulling on it close to the edge. I have discovered that there is specific like beading felt or beading base that does allow for that, but this is not that stuff. This is just stuff I had, because this was going to be an experiment. So... I'm gonna have to deal with it. And thus, the fray check. Alright, that should do it. So, I think that's the finished design. I'm actually reasonably happy with it. I'm I'm not the huge brooch person, but as brooches go, it's not bad. Uh, so let me just... I'm going to soak the whole edge in fray check, and then while it dries, I'm going to do the soldering. So let's do this. There's a well-moved area, and they're now dead straight. Ah, good. It's It's always good when a bunch of effort pays off, you know? So I'm just dabbing generous amounts of fray check all along the edge of the design. Now I'm not sure where I started. Did I get everything yet or did I not? Feels a bit wet, I don't know. I'll just put in more. Okay, I think I've gone around it twice. Hey, welcome back, Shania. Alright, um, this stinks because I soaked a bunch of fray check into it, so I'm gonna open a window. And then we're gonna get to some soldering. So let's put the beads away and stuff. So, oh yeah, this is another thing I changed my mind on. Uh, what I was gonna do, where's my stuff? What I was gonna do is, uh, as you know, I've got the, um, the two wires for the LED on the back here in this uh, conductive thread. And I was gonna cut the pin in half and make it the on-off switch. Like when you close the pin, it would switch on. But then I thought, but what if I want to wear it without the light on? Oh, I could just pop the battery out. And then I realized that maybe just popping the battery out is actually a way better on-off switch than fiddling with cutting the pin in half. So I'm gonna circumvent that. So the pin is now out. It's still gonna go on the back, but it's not gonna be part of the circuit. So instead, I just want to, if I remember correctly, um, this is the plus and this is the minus on the LED. <laughs> I'll double check that to confirm <laughs> before I connect it to the wrong side of the, uh, of the battery. Um, there's one resistor that needs to go in there, this little guy. Um, and then this is the, the battery cell connector thing pocket. So I can stitch this on because it's got some holes in it. Um, and I'm thinking that what I want to do to connect these threads to them, because I don't think these will solder well, uh, I want to make loops on this and on one of the ends of the uh, resistor that I can then stitch the thread through. So that's kind of the plan. So we have to go from the plus on the LED to the plus on the battery to through the LED and then this goes on the resistor and the resistor goes on the battery again. And that closes the circuit. I'm just going to confirm that I've got my pluses and minuses right before I screw this up. So in theory, see the edge is the plus. 
So this is the plus on the battery. That goes there. This is the resistor. Actually, let's do it like this. Resistor goes there. Minus goes there. Let's see if I just sort of vaguely hold this together, whether that will do anything. Oops. Sounds like I've got some notification noises on that I'm going to just switch off. Give me just a sec. All right, that should be sorted. Um, so I'm going to just wrap this around the, the resistor. Hopefully that'll make contact. And then resistor goes there. Red goes here. Ah, it works. That's you can barely see that on the stream, but I, I can tell that it is switching on. Maybe if I, it's a bit too light in the room to see properly, but I have got this right. So that's, that's nice. So I'm just gonna bend the legs of the, um, of the resistor in such a way that I can solder one end to the battery holder and make a loop on the other end to stitch this thread through. So I've already squiggled it out a bit as I was testing it. I'll see if I can flatten it out or whether I need a new one. Let's see where all my pliers are. Hmm, I can only find one, which is not ideal. Where did all the other pliers go? Maybe I'll use a, a paper clip or some kind of wire to make a loop on the other side of the battery. So I need a, a loop on the plus side of the battery, don't I? Wait. So if I flip this over and I put the clasp here, battery goes... Oh, I can still flip, I can still flip this over. Yeah. As long as I get these two connected properly. Excuse me! Nice noise outside. All right. So I'm gonna just roll both of the ends of this resistor into a tiny loop. One to stitch through and one because it's just a nice surface area to do the soldering, I think. I think that'll be quite a clean... Ooh, I've never... <laughs> I've tried making tiny loops on the ends of metal before, but it's never turned out this nice. Hi, Sewing Hub. Hi from the Netherlands. Uh, greetings to Scotland, I suppose. Um, I'm just gonna get, um, I think, a paper clip to make a, a little loop on the other end of the battery pack. Let me just go find one. In a shocking turn of events, I don't know where my paper clips actually are. So I'm going to use something else, which is going to be... I don't know. Let's see what I've got. All right, 
I found um, a tiny, uh, what is it, a safety pin that I think I can just straight up cut down to where I want it to go. And then I will, I will use the, like the circle that's already there to do the sewing and then I'll just make another little squiggly bit for the soldering. I think that will work. Let's cut off the sharp end and the long end. Then I'm just gonna bend another little eye on the end. And the whole purpose of this eye is just to give me some surface area to do some soldering with. So it will be stronger, I hope. Alright, I think that's it. So let's get the soldering iron warmed up. Let's get rid of some of this stuff. So the cable is a little bit short, but I think we'll manage. <laughs> yeah, a sponge just in case I need it. Oh, um, some actual solder might be a good idea. Where do I have that? There we are. So, like we said, little loop goes on the plus. Um, resistor goes on the minus. I gotta do that right if I'm gonna say it. Just double checking that this is a plus on the LED. So wait. If I'm gonna stitch this here like that, I want the LED to go up like that. So I'm gonna do this. Oh yeah, probably some sort of surface that I don't mind soldering on. Might be also a good plan. Let's see, I need these pieces. Do this. So if I switch this around, yeah, that needs to go like that. That needs to go like that. Start with that. I don't know if those nice, uh, like, clippy thingies that people use to hold stuff in place when they're soldering, so I'm gonna just have to deal with it. I think I'm gonna flip it over so I can do it with my right hand. Let's see. I could potentially, I guess, tape it down if it doesn't want to. Doesn't want it to go. Whoops. No, 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 no. So, I kind of flipped the the ring on the resistor onto its side as I did that, but I have to say it doesn't look awful. I think if I just put a little bit more solder on it, it'll be just fine. Yeah, I think that's fairly solid. It works. Total! Alright, that's one thing. Uh, 
and then this little ring thingy needs to go on the other side of the battery holder. Seems about right. <laughs> that went surprisingly well. Uh, and just for, uh, just to make sure, I'm gonna also solder the ring on the resistor shut, just so that none of my thread can escape. Yeah, I think that's it. Sweet. Alright, let's unplug it, I guess. <laughs> and there we have <laughs> our little circuit. Uh, it's a little bit primitive, but uh, I think it'll work. So let's just test it, actually, before I, before I get rid of everything and it turns out I did it wrong. If I put this and of the LED through this eye. I know I checked it three times already, but I can never test enough. You got a third hand clippy thingy from Santa? <laughs> yeah, those third hand clippy thingies are actually really neat when you need to do soldering. Uh, I'm not enough of an electronics geek that I've got one. But sometimes I wish I did. Maybe I should just become enough of an electronics nerd to, to warrant having one. And then we plop a battery in there. And then we flip it over and it's on. I think you can see that it's on. Cool. So I did it right. That's nice. Let's plop that out. So now I'm just gonna stitch this to the back. Also making sure to leave a little bit of room for the clip or the like the pin. So let's make sure I've got this all laid out. I can I can bend the uh, resistor a little bit to make it fit where I need it to. So I think I've got some wiggle room. Take everything out. So if I put this right there, ooh. Actually, this ring goes right on top of where that wire comes out of the moon. So that's actually a very tight fit. Let's see exactly what is up, though. I don't want to... Would you say that this is exactly up with the moon slightly tilted to that side? Or would you say that it's exactly like this? Where... Exactly... I don't know. Should it go like through the center of this cabochon should be the... Horizontal, I think. I think so. So I'm just gonna put some... I think I actually drew that line on my original design or folded it in or something. Oh yeah, I've got a fold. So, let's see. According to my previous calculations, the middle goes just about here. And just about there. So if we flip it over, that means that this, this weighs up. So I just want to make sure that I put the battery like cleanly in the middle of the bottom so it will hang straight down and not try to flop around too much. So that would go something like this. I will definitely need to bend the LED. It's fine. I'll just go straight across. Oh, sorry, bend the, uh, the resistor. So... I'll make it go like this, and then the pin can go 
right there. I think that adds up. I'll just show you where everything ended up because it's really difficult to see on the camera. So here I've got the two wires that are coming out of the LED. That's these two strings. Put the battery pack there. Put the LED, uh, the resistor going up like that, and then like that, and then it's going to connect to this wire, and the pin is just going to sit above it somewhere, not connected to anything. I think that checks out. Even if the pin ends up touching the resistor a little bit, it's no problem because it doesn't actually short anything in the circuit, so I think this is where it's going to go. I'm going to take some of the fire line to attach it to, um to stitch in the, um, stitch through the holes of the battery holder. And then I'm gonna get my embroidery needle to do the, um, to do the threads. Santa has brought me clamps and screwdrivers. <laughs> oh yeah! Clamps and screwdrivers are not bad gifts. It's, uh... <laughs> I do remember that year that Santa got a little bit confused because there were perhaps multiple Santas involved. And my dad ended up with like three sets of screwdrivers, but um, in general, screwdrivers are not bad. All right. I want to make these stitches as tiny as I possibly can on the front. Maybe not even visible on the front. Like, ideally, not even visible on the front. So let's see how we can best do this. Oh yeah, and by the way, so... I'm gonna stitch this in now, and then over the top of it, there's gonna be another piece of felt to cover up all this nonsense that's going on. And I'll just cut a gap for the battery holder and a gap for the pin. So that will hopefully look nice and clean by the time it's done. Is this cooled off yet? No, it's still warm. All right, let's try to get this attached nice and clean and not too close to the edge because the battery's going to stick out a bit at the bottom and I need that to also be covered. So I think it should go here. I'm just going to stitch through each of these holes, maybe twice or three times. I'm getting kind of lucky here where I'm coming out right near the beads instead of in the middle of the embroidery. So I'm... wait, what? Oh, it's sort of wrapped around itself. You're not supposed to go there. You're supposed to go here. Uh, as I was saying, I've come out right near the beads, so these stitches definitely won't be visible. to the second hole and that is going to come out right in the middle of the embroidery so I'm going to try to maybe sort of go with the embroidery to try to make these stitches not be visible. I do need to end up like I can't make the stitch too tiny because then I won't actually come out 
anywhere that is good for making a loop around the edge of the battery holder. So that's a bit tricky. Is this any good? Oh yeah, it's pretty subtle. Sunday has really become your sewing day. Oh yeah, that's that's uh that's really good to hear, Shania. Like having a, a fixed sewing day when you know that you're gonna be doing stuff is also so great for your productivity. It's just so much I don't know. If you have to spend less effort figuring out what you're gonna do today, because today's definitely sewing. That just makes it so much easier to get stuff done. Alright, so Stitch is not entirely invisible, but I can deal with it. It's one of, it's another one of those if you can see it you're too close kind of things, so I'll take it. That's kind of why I started the stream to begin with, is just to have a, a day where I knew I would be making something. It's worked out pretty well. All right, so now let's move to the fourth hole. Uh, oh, that's potentially an issue. It's like the fourth um, thing where I wanted to stitch on the uh, battery pack is right underneath the cabochon, so I can't actually go through. That's a, that's a thing. See if I can sort of angle it through somewhere. It's pretty sturdy already, so I'm okay with it if I can only get one stitch in. Oh, it wasn't too bad. Alright, I'm gonna go back... Alright, and let's just secure this now. Oops. Alright, I think that'll do it. And then I just... I want to give, um... I want to give the resistor just a couple of stitches to also hold it in place. But the bit of, the bit of line I've got left is very short, so let's see if I can pull it off. I don't want to waste this bit. And I don't want to get a new bit either. I can actually still smell the fray check, so it's probably not entirely dry yet. <laughs> I also think that this 
gluey stuff on my fingers is is it. How did you take it with the idea to come make it light up? Um, I just... The idea just sort of got out of hand. I, um... I like things that light up to begin with, so it's a, it's a place that my brain pretty easily goes. It's like, oh, but you could also add LEDs. Uh, but it, this entire thing is a project that got kind of out of hand. It was it started with, oh, I want to try some embroidery, and then I found out embroidery with beads, and then I found out beadwork, and then I found out cabochons on felt and brooches, and then I'm not entirely sure how I ended up with the uh, with the. LED. I think because it's a moon and it's glow in the dark, I was like, but what if it glows by itself? Because these cabochons are also um, like with glow in the dark pigments. And then and I was like, hold on, I actually have LED sequins. Like I already had them from a different project, so the barrier to adding an LED was fairly light. It was fairly, uh, fairly low. So I did. Right, I'm just securing the the resistor in like the corner where it bends. So that'll stay in place nicely, hopefully. This is on the black part of the embroidery, so probably pretty invisible. I think that's enough. Let's secure that. So that's the, um, let's say, the hard electronics stitched down. Now I just need to take a large needle and get these conductive threads wrapped around the, uh, the eyes that I made for them. Also, I'm going to just slightly, as you can see, the, uh, the eye that I made on the resistor is now sort of standing up because I bent it. And I kind of want it to be flat, so let's give that another twist or so. There. That's better. Now, a bigger needle. There we are. I put some, uh, like this conductive thread stuff is very bad at um, staying in a knot, so I, and, and like it frays quite bad. So I put some clear nail polish on the ends, and I'm also planning to put some clear nail polish on the uh, on the knots when I finish it, so it'll stay in place. I think these markers can go now. It's becoming quite a nice mess on the back here. So the resistor is bending quite easily, so that's both good and bad. It means that if I screw it up a little bit, I can just push it somewhere else, but it's also making it kind of a nightmare to stitch around it. So I'm basically just stitching through the loop I made a couple of times with the conductive thread, so that'll make a good contact. Uh, they're not coated, no. Uh, they're intended to be just stitched into fabric, 
so that's why there's no coding on it. Um, I'm not sure at what point uh, water becomes an issue, like how close they need to be together for wet fabric to get conductive enough that it matters. I haven't tested it, but I imagine that like the conductivity of um, of wet fabric is not insanely large. And um, I mean, this this takes like a three volt standard tiny battery. I'm not entirely sure what the maximum current on this thing is, but it's not much. So uh, I, 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 I have no fears of getting electrocuted by my brooch, honestly. I'm gonna just put some clear nail polish on that, which I think is on my desk. Now let's do the other side, and this is already, they're extremely close to each other, like here you can see the um, the ring on the battery pack, and here's the, uh, the conductive thread, so. Just gonna loop it around there a couple of times and that should be it. What if a project becomes super large? Oh yeah, I mean, I wouldn't recommend doing like high voltage, high current stuff uh, on your clothes to begin with. Uh, because basically all the like wearable electronics products are intended to basically have exposed electronics, like nothing is insulated particularly well or at all. Like the, uh, the LED that's in here, the, um, it's fully intended to be used with the conductive thread. Like, as you, it's, it's actually sort of made up like a sequin. So you can see, maybe, you've basically got the LED in the middle and then you've got two uh, conductive pads that are the plus and a minus that have little holes in them. So you can stitch through them. So it's fully intended to be exposed. But I've done um I've done a shirt with multiple LEDs in it. Yeah, I, like I wouldn't wear like this. This thread is not particularly um, smooth either. Like I imagine it's kind of itchy if you wear it right on your skin. So maybe don't. But I, I made a shirt with a larger number of LEDs and um uh, an accelerometer in there. Or at least like a whole, a whole microcontroller, but that still is only doing like five volts max or something, and not using a whole bunch of current at all. So I still wouldn't wear it right up against my skin, but I don't know. it's not that huge a deal. Just trying to tie a knot here. It's very not cooperative. Like, I'll let you know if I ever physically notice the fact that my clothes have batteries in them. Let's also put some nail polish on that.
All right, let's do a final check to see whether I, I've connected everything correctly. Better check everything five times. All right, it works. That's good. And the battery does still come out. Okay, good. Um, so now I'm gonna finish the back by putting an additional layer of felt on top of it and leaving some gaps for the battery holder and the- oh, I still need to attach the pin. Excellent point, me. I you almost forgot about that. I've still got this pin dude that needs to go at the top. So let's do that as well. Uh, let's see what makes sense if I'm gonna wear it. I'm gonna be pinning with my right hand. So if the pin is on it like this, that would mean I'm sticking it in the way I want it to, right? Oh yeah, hard lumps. That is <laughs> de definitely the lumps uh, and the uh, sort of the wiggling of heavy stuff in your shirt. But um, I haven't felt any of the electricity. I'm just gonna use some of my, um, I don't know, my leftover embroidery thread for this. Where exactly am I going to stitch this? Where am I? Nah, I'm going to use the fire line. I think it's better. Better and less visible. And all those uh, wearable electronics are also intended to be at least somewhat washable. Basically, as long as you let it dry before powering it up, it should be fine. Not that I intend to wash a brooch, but on the shirt that was kind of a concern. I just take the, um, the main board off. Like it connects with some snaps and everything else is washable. It's just some LEDs and some wires. So yeah, putting lights in things, it's great. This is not the knot I was hoping for. Try that again. No, I want these knots to go on top of each other. What are you doing, you da? Ah. Oh. This is clearly me blaming hardware for my own failings, but uh Come on. I don't want a million tiny knots next to each other. You know that. Got there. Uh, so, pin goes where exactly? Is it correct that this is the top? Yes. Pin goes here. It's once again right next to, to one of the cabochons, so I'm gonna move it slightly. Or maybe I should just glue it on, but I don't know. It's got holes in it. It's clearly meant for stitching. I think it'll be more secure that way. It 
It's a music player just playing the same song over and over again. I feel like I've heard this several times before today. Okay. Uh, no, actually, that's really ugly what I've just done there. I'm gonna take that out. I made like a big stitch across some of the embroidery. That's gotta come out. That looks like crap. Let's try that again. Come on, go on the needle. You know you want to. doesn't want to. Come on now. Like the tiny amount the, the, the fishing line frays when I cut it is enough to stop it going through this teeny tiny needle. And I'm kind of upset. I look like an idiot just talking to inanimate objects to make them do things that I should be able to control. All right. Got there in the end. I'm gonna go right through in the same spot and then I'll just wiggle it to where I want it to go in the back. There we go. All right, I think that's good enough. Now let's make a a backing for this whole thing. Cuz obviously this this doesn't look that nice. I said I was going to do felt, but I've also seen people do it with um some like sturdy fake leather. Anything that doesn't fray basically is good. But I don't, I'm not sure I still have any. I have some like soft fake leather, but it's not, not as fray proof as I would like this to be. Is this cooled off now? Yeah, this is fine. Um. So, question time. Am I gonna make the backing out of this same felt? <laughs> the man in the moon face is still cute? Oh, I mean, I I tried to make it not a face by adding these two stars, like little beads. Uh, but if you want to, this can be his nose. Like... <laughs> uh, I think I had some... Not quite leather fabric that I might be able to use. Mm. But 
I don't know where it is. I think I'll just settle for, um, for more felt. So let's get a circle of exactly the correct size. And that will also help me... Well, maybe I should cut it out first, so I know I'm definitely not cutting the other part too small. I don't know. Or maybe I should cut both bigger and then cut it out together. I think that also makes sense. Yeah, let's cut out a too big circle. Take leather hold the shape better. Yeah. Probably yes. But I'm I don't I don't have the fake leather right now, so I'm gonna do this. Uh tiny piece of tape is what I would want. Just to hold my circle together for a sec. All right, let's cut this out. Slightly too big, so I can trim it. I can trim like both halves together into a pleasant shape. Oh yeah, I also found it difficult to unsee, but I, I'm, I'm getting there. Um, so now I'm going to mark where I need to cut holes for the battery holder and the pin. So for the pin I just want to make two small holes that will allow the pin itself and that clippy thingy to come through and cover everything else. Just start with that. Um, how am I going to do this nicely? Uh, where's my chalk pencil? Well, I, mm, I don't know. I'll just place it over the top and sort of feel where it is. And then, well, if I didn't move it, I think I could do the same for the battery holder. That seems about right. I'm gonna start by cutting out the um, the battery holder maybe and then I can make small adjustments for the pin. So I think this is a, a little bit off to the side the way I've got it marked now. And I kind of want to move it a bit more to this. Uh, actually it's kind of off to the side here as well. I'm gonna trust my measurements. YOLO. And if I get it wrong I can just cut another piece of felt. So. Let us, why do I have a, what is this? Oh, that's a bit of the safety pin. Apparently my, um, my scissors are a bit magnetic. All right, so cutting out a circle for the battery. See if that I think it's a bit small. Yeah. Oh right. It's not just a circle, it's also these little sticky outy bits, so I need to make gaps for that as well. So I also need to cut to about here and about there. I'm just 
just gonna cut straight into it and then it'll stick up and I'll remove the excess. Sort of the way you do um, wallpaper in corners. Okay, I think it fits pretty snugly around the battery holder now. Let's see if I need to cut more away or whether the battery will snap in like this. Where... where is the battery? Yeah, that seems good. Okay. Now let's see if my markings for the pin are still correct. I have a feeling it shifted a little bit. Right. I'm initially just gonna snip a little hole for the whoops for the pin bit. And then snip a slightly larger hole for the, uh, the clip bit. I'm not sure. <laughs> this probably has names, but I don't know them. What's the green object? Uh, what green object? Are this! This green object? That's a sponge. Uh, it's a wet sponge that I used to um, wipe my soldering iron on. It's just one of those uh, average crappy sponges. I think that I need to make this hole a little bit bigger, or it's... Yeah, this needs a little bit more space, I think. Yeah, I guess the sponge looks a little bit weird when you just see the top of it on camera. It's like, why is there a, a disgustingly filthy green thing there? I think that's it, and I can comfortably fit everything through now. There. That, I think, looks fairly put together. You can sort of see the embroidery at the edge of the battery holder, but honestly, who cares and what am I going to do about it, so... I'm gonna take some, I think, fabric glue to put this on. Seems reasonable. So, I got some Gooderman fabric glue. Yeah, it's the back anyways. Exactly. Well, I still want to make it look nice to, I don't know, give it a kind of professional air, but at the same time, I'm not planning to sell this or anything. I'm just trying- oh yeah, this is definitely a face. Like, he's, he's a little bit worried as well. Worried and surprised. I'm gonna make sure I get quite a lot on the edges. Wow, this stuff smells as well. Good thing 
I've got the window open. Also make sure I've got a lot of glue around the edges of the like components. Mr. Bill? Who's Mr. Bill? This must be a reference that I probably should get, but don't. Alright, just glue just about everywhere. Let's stick this on and hope for the best. Gotta make sure I put the pin through, otherwise it won't work that well. Er, yeah. Alright, now let's sort of, I don't know. It's almost like modeling clay into place. Thirty years ago on Saturday Night Live. Oh yeah, that is uh thirty years ago I was not watching American TV, so uh I was about three years old in the Netherlands, so I'll, I'll have to Google that. But I can see how this would be a typical claymation face. Alright, I think I've got it. Make sure I get it pressed down around the edges nice and tight. Get all the corners. Oh wait, I'm still missing. There we go. All right, I think that should do it. This is gonna have to dry for a little bit before I can um, start trimming the edges, I think. What's the recommended drying time on this? It does not say. Oh! There is more information. A lot more information. What language do I want this in? Alright, the... Oh, I wasn't supposed to hold it straight down for some reason, but at an angle. Anyone have a clue why uh, the glue instructions would say, don't hold it like this, hold it like this? Anyone? Uh, Oh, they were telling me not to push it into the fabric. <laughs> well, I just squished it a whole bunch, so let's see how that works. Let's see, two minutes before sticking it down, I guess I got approximately that. Dry for seven minutes and then iron it. Oh. Apparently you can... Oh, but that's with very delicate fabrics. Okay, don't need that. Doesn't really say how long to let it dry. Oh well. I'm just gonna clean up my soldering crap for a sec while this kind of dries. And then I'll start cutting it out, I think. I just don't- like, I know that I can't cut this properly with my normal scissors. And I don't want to get glue stuck to my good scissors. Uh, oh yeah, it's possible that, that bubbles will come out if you hold it like that. If you hold it like this, bubbles will come out more easily. That's possible. Um, so. Let's clean up some of my soldering crap and then cut it out. 
And then I'm gonna um, stitch around the edge with yet more beads to finish it off nicely. And that should be it. How thick is it? Uh, so it's two layers of felt. Uh, and then the thickness of the beads and the embroidery, which is... I guess maybe the beads is worth another layer of felt or a little bit less. Um, oh yeah, so question time for finishing the edge. Um, the idea is that it's going to have beads around it as well. Should I use the same beads that I've already got to sort of solidify that edge that's already there? Or should I use a different color? I don't want to introduce too many new colors to it. So it's going to be either the same sort of silvery beads or I've got some black seed beads where, well actually honestly, I'm not entirely convinced I have enough. Uh, to even go around the edge, so that's a consideration. It'd probably be easy to get more of these, but I don't want to go on another shopping trip for this thing. So maybe I'll just make it out of the same silvery beads. Oh, the glue? Um, it's sort of like that, you know, the, the standard clear hobby glue? Uh, the sort of the these ones. It's it's like it's a little bit stringy, but it's not too thick. Oh, it's raining slightly inside now that the window is open. Let's fix that. All right. I think I'm gonna dare to cut it out. There's a little bit of edge of there's a little edge of glue here that seems to be dry now. So let's try it. Like it nice and subtle. Yeah, I I, th I th I'm thinking the same thing. That the black would be nice. Let's see. I've also got this box of mixed beads, but these are kind of crappy. There's some black in there, but I'm not sure they're the same size as the black ones I've already got. Maybe I can salvage enough black beads out of this to get there. I don't know. Let's let's compare the size real quick. Where did I put that? Black with some silver. Oh yeah, a mix is actually quite a nice idea as well. So these are the ones from the mix box, and these are the ones from the jar. I'm gonna just put them on the needle to see the difference. They will stay in place. The first four are from the jar. second. So actually I think that's extremely close. The size is a bit more uneven on the ones from the mix box, but I think I can scrounge together enough black beads that I can make it work. So maybe I'll go for like black black silver, black black silver as a mix. Seems like a plan. Should I go black, silver, black, silver, black, silver? Black and a silver thread? Yeah. I think I'm gonna... I think black, silver, black, silver, black, silver will be 
nice and even instead of going black, black, silver, black, black, silver. So I'm going to do that. Two to one. I think we're talking about the beads. I got a... Um... So I've got the silver beads that are around the edge already. And I've got a little bit of black. Or potentially enough black. Maybe I'll just try to go all black. I'll just string together some of it and hold it up against the edge to see what I like. So now is the nerve-wracking part where I hope that all of my gluing and stuff is actually going to help this stay together. And like, I hope that not all the beads that are already around the edge are going to just pull out of it now that I'm cutting this close to the edge. Yeah, let's just test it. I think that's a smart thing to do. Alright, so far so good. I've not cut terribly close to the edge, but it's, I think, close enough to the edge that I'm gonna just... Trim it a bit here and there to make it more smooth. And try to finish it. I'm also noticing that it didn't turn out entirely round. <laughs> it's a little bit odd shaped. It's a little bit like it's got a dent in it over here or something. It's, uh, it's unfortunate. I think if I had if I had not changed my mind on this edge, it might have turned out better. But uh, too bad. How close to a circle is it? Like, yeah, ah, it's actually not that far off. It's a little bit lopsided here and there. See if I can see if I can correct the lopsidedness a little bit just by suggesting roundness in the uh, in the finish. Um, it's not, uh, I think it's, I think it's, uh, polyester felt. Let's see what it does if you hold a lighter up to it. Let, let's see if it is polyester felt. It might be a... Uh... Oh, actually. It smells more like burnt paper. It smells a bit like paper and a bit vaguely chemical, so maybe... What is that, um... What's that artificial fiber they make out of natural fibers? The vis viscose or... Cellulose. That's that's what I'm smelling. But in any case, it's not going to melt. So that, that one's out. So the plan is that I'm just going to stitch beads around the edge. And that'll that'll do it. Let's just get started on it. I'm, I'm, I'm tired of trying to figure out better ways. So let's try some of the the edge options. Put some 
some beads here. Like I have a, it's not rayon, uh, I've got something in mind that I can't think of right now. <laughs> but hey. So, one of the options was black silver, black silver, black silver. And then we would get something like this. Not quite this, because the the, uh, the beads would be like on their sides instead of facing, but kind of like that. I think it looks quite nice, and it almost makes the silver look more sparkly, because there's black in between. Then the other option was two to one. I'm assuming that when you said two to one, you meant black, black, silver, and not silver, silver, black. But we can try that too if you want. All right, so here's the black, black, silver thing. Which is also pretty nice. I'm a little bit worried if I do this because it's like a three bead cycle that at the end I will meet where I started and it won't fit. So that's that's a consideration. Where I will like I will reach the end and there will be space for two beads where I need three. Something like that. Or just plain black. Should be like this. It is very subtle. Like it's, there. You just get a little bit of light reflecting off the beads, but you don't get sort of additional design feature, which I think is a quality. And then two black, one silver. I I am concerned if that's like. I need to aim very carefully whether it will end up correctly in the end. I do like how it looks, but let's just, and also let's try the all silver option, which I think will also also be I, get, I think because the edge is already black, and I'm trying to sort of make the edge look. Like, now it looks kind of like rough felt, which is kind of not great. And I'm trying to sort of camouflage it by putting beads around the edge. And if it's the same color as the felt, then it's not as obvious where the felt stops and the beads begin. So I think that is definitely also a quality. This is, this is not it, though. I think I'm going to go with all black. I think it's going to... I think if I'd executed this better, the uh, the black and silver combos would have turned out nice, but I didn't. So I think that in order to sort of pull it together without making it worse, I'm gonna just do all black. Um, now I need to try to remember how that edge stitchy thingy worked. I've seen it on a couple of videos where you, I think like you come out of the fabric on one side, go through the bead, it's sort of like you go through the bead, through the fabric, and then up through the bead. I think that's it. And by that you go through both the front and the back of the fabric. Does that make sense? 
No, what is holding... Oh yeah, and then you move on to the next bead. That's what's holding it in place. You go in through the top of the bead, through the fabric, out the top of the bead, and into the top of the next bead. I, th I think my brain has got this now. So let's see if I can do this. I don't know why I'm still putting the end of that fishing line in my mouth before I put it through the needle. Not like it being wet helps anything. Oh yeah, and I also seen this lady in this video do a, a really subtle thing where like the knot where you start goes in between the two felt layers or in between like the the felt and the and the leather so it's entirely hidden i like little touches like that so she would go in between the layers Would you start on the front or on the back? Wait, I'm gonna start on the side where it's probably not so obvious if I screw up. I'm going out the front. Stuffing this little end between the layers. I think maybe my glue job was not sufficient. Still separating pretty easily here. But I guess once I'm done stitching, it'll stay together anyway. Alright, maybe it's actually kind of thick for the beads that I'm going to put on the edge, right? That's not going to cover the whole thing. Maybe I need larger beads. Like, look at this. This is the width of the bead. This is the width of the thing. Put them on top of each other and it's just kind of sad. I don't think... I don't know. I'm just gonna try it for one stitch. <laughs> See how sad it looks. I've got some slightly bigger black beads somewhere. So maybe they will help me out. And then you go... Wait, no. This is wrong? Because oh, it's the first bead, you have no choice, right? It has to start somewhere. So this is considered the top of the bead, and then I would go out... Like that. And then it just sits there on the edge like this. It's a little bit not that visible on camera. But I do think that the width of that bead compared to the width of... Is it better on... Is it better here? Yeah. I think the width of that bead compared to the width of the, um, the felt looks a little bit sad. It's not horrendous, but it's not great. See what what else I've got. I'm gonna more stuff. I need more stuff.
So I found these sort of, I think it's onyx beads. They're a bit, uh, or maybe um, obsidian, I guess. They are, they have a, a slight uh, gray sort of snowflake effect in them. It's quite cute. They're round beads, which I think I prefer something with a flat side so it will sit neatly on the edge of the felt. The same goes for these hematite beads, I guess. They're a bit larger, I think. Not exact same size, okay. Then I've got these little dudes that are essentially just larger seed beads. But the quality of these is horrendous. Like the sizes are not the same at all. Which matters quite a lot if they're going to be set on their sides, so I don't think that's going to work. Um, and then I think these are a good size, but these are really cheap plasticky beads and they are not black either. So I think either the silver or this vaguely shimmery thing would work. So these are, I think, a good size for what I want. They're just not the right color. <laughs> so, uh, uh, I'm gonna just do the same thing where I hold them up to the edge, I guess. See what it looks like. I don't like using the cheap plasticky things, but at the same time, I have them. Might as well use them for something, especially if the something is a experimental kind of crappy piece. since I wouldn't use them on anything serious. Where's the box? Oops, I'm losing some. Ah, okay, more tests. Ooh, come back. How about this? Ah, it's too bright, isn't it? I don't, I don't like it. Yeah, yeah. I don't like it. Let's try the, the onyx or the whatever, obsidian beads. These are actually stone. I'm not sure if they're like dug up from the earth or artificially made, but... These are quite a bit bigger though. This is kind of a lot. They're so big. It is a nice color for it. Like I think the, the slight hint of gray that's in these kind of pulls it together. But they're so big and chunky. Draw so much attention. <sighs> Maybe I'll stick with the, um, the the tiny black beads anyway. I think it's still my best option. Even if I don't like it a whole lot. Is there some system I can come up with that would allow me to put two of those next to each other or something? I don't know. I 
I do think I want to trim the edge a bit further as well. Because these are this is really sitting. Yeah. I do think it measures the big white bulbs, but if you don't like it, it's not the answer. Yeah! It's, uh, <laughs> I kind of want it to be more midnight than that. Since it is a moon. Because mm. So the thing that worries me now is that this the beads stick out quite a bit from the edge of the felt, like you can still see it. So maybe I'll just trim it down a bit further. A little bit nervous about that, but I'll risk it. It's garbage. You've all witnessed the greatness before the fall, so uh... <laughs> Embroidery floss and a chain stitch? I mean, maybe yes, actually. Maybe this shouldn't be beads. Maybe... Maybe that's just... an idea that I got in my head that is not necessarily productive. Let's see if I can get this little dude off... the edge... there. Let's let's get rid of the beads for a sec and just uh, uh that's gonna be a mess. Let's just try some stuff on the edge of a little bit of felt. I got some here. Um what have I I got some leftover embroidery floss here anyway. I'll take I don't know. I think the white is definitely not going to be it. It's going to be either black or that same color I used for the moon, right? I think that makes sense. I don't think I have any moon leftovers. Oh, I do. This. I think. Yes. Sealing the felt and then beating for prettiness. Yeah, I'm not sure how I'm gonna seal the felt. <laughs> I, don't, I, I think that's sort of a, like I've already soaked it in glue and fray check. A basket stitch is that the one where? Wait, I, I'm just gonna Google it because if I describe it, it's not gonna turn out like anything useful. So, a basket st stitch. Is that sort of the one that they do around the edge of blankets as well? Oh, this is all... Apparently there's a knitting stitch called a basket stitch, so that's... Well, that's not useful. A basket stitch. Embroidery. That's what I want. Oh, it's sort of... Woven together stitch. Oh, because, because it's like the surface of a basket. Okay, that makes sense. Um, I don't know. I'm just gonna try just doing a stitch that just wraps around the edge a bunch of times. So let's see if I have a thinner embroidery needle, because this one is kind of tough to get through the felt. I have to be a little bit neater about it, but on the other hand, most of this will be hidden underneath the beads anyway. This is actually not bad looking. And I think if I stitch it slightly through the thread that's holding the beads, it'll also be really secure. I wasn't trying that hard to make it nice, but it's turned out kind of decent. Let's see. A 
I think I don't like the gray there. Maybe it should just be black. Yeah, I think it should just be black. Do I have black leftovers to try it? Well, I guess I don't need to try it because it's it's just black. It can't really go wrong. Let's do that. Why is this turning into a huge mess? Black! Yeah, let's go for black. And I'm gonna go for, I don't know, four as a thickness? Seems, seems decent. Do, do, do. Seems like a good enough length to start with. Let's see if I've got a slightly thinner needle, because I've been kind of tired of this one. Where is it? I think this will do. Hello, please come out of the package, yes. Ugh. There. All right, no beads, just black embroidery floss, which is appropriate for a project that started out as an, embro as an embroidery experiment. I'll clean up all the beads later. So, let's go for it. Someone can teach me how to split these in a way that they don't tangle. That would also be great. Because sometimes it's doing great, and then it just sort of catches on itself. And it's something to do with the fact that they're twisted. And I, I don't know how to, how to not have this problem. It's looking nice. Oh, thanks, Michelle. Uh, I'm not entirely sold on it, but it's it's definitely become a thing. Like it's a it's a little bit lopsided here and there. It's not as round as I'd want it to be, and uh, you know, but it's it's turning out as something that looks like someone purposefully made it rather than something that was just like found in a dumpster. So. I'm I'm happy with that. Let's cut away this beading thread that I put there. If I can still manage to pull it out. All right, so embroidery floss around the edge it is. I'm so gonna see if I can also just start that just slightly in between the felt so no one has to see the knot. That'd be pretty sweet. I gotta stay hydrated. Um. So let's also get this finicked in between the edge. Let's see, I want to be deliberate about where I stitch on the back to make that edge nice and even. And I don't care so much about the front as long as I come out somewhere next to or behind the beads. So I want to be stitching into the back. So I need to come out of the front. Yes, that makes sense. You need to hold the part that is still together as you untwist. Well, six turns around. Ah. Okay, I'll I'll try that next time. 
I'm gonna just stuff these ends. I'm gonna throw a little bit of extra glue in there. Oh wait, no, I don't need to because I just... I can just stitch around it to sandwich it together. Right. So, let's go for it. Let's try not to get this too tangled up in itself every time. I'm gonna try to stitch sort of diagonally, like as far as possible as I can into the back and then somewhere reasonable out of the front so I can get as much felt as possible in every stitch so that it won't tear out, I hope. That's a... Uh... I'm gonna need a bit more light to see whether I'm doing this sort of black on black stitching right. It's kind of hard to see what I'm doing. Okay. I'm looking decent so far. And I guess if I screw this up a little bit, it won't show because it's just black thread on a black background anyway. That should be fairly forgiving. I noticed that the, the camera is like flickering a lot. Is it because the autofocus is going mad over my hands moving? <laughs> okay. Is that it? I'm not sure what's going on with the, the autofocus and some sort of automatic light correction or something on the, on the camera. I'm sorry if this is causing anyone seizures or something. Yeah, exactly. I think that's it. I'm gonna just remove this felt here and wait. <laughs> Let's see if we can get it to stop doing stupid stuff. I've got... I've picked up a bit of white fabric off the floor. Let's see if that makes it any better. Let's see. Put it across as much of this as I can. There we go. I think that's actually fixed it. Sweet. Yeah, the magic of scraps of fabric. I think this is actually turning out quite nicely. Like it's it's 
pretty much doing what I wanted to do. I'm not sure how well this shows. But it's it's reasonably even. And it's really pulling together the two layers. Let's see if this camera shows any better. Well, it's, it's really hard to show. But it's quite nice. You gotta trust me on that. It's, uh... It's doing what I wanted to do. So what time is it now? Wow, it's five, almost 5.30 already. And here I was saying, oh yeah, I'll just, I don't have much work on the brooch today. I'll probably just finish it and then maybe I'll get around to putting a welt pocket in my waistcoat. And of course, I will have done nothing of the sort by the time I finish this. I'll definitely finish doing this um, embroidery around the edge. So that's going fairly quickly, but the, the hopes and dreams of welt pockets are think not coming true today. So I guess it's time to sort of evaluate my um, first embroidery experience. It's, uh, it's not bad. You can go a lot of ways with embroidery as well. Like since then I've, I've watched a bunch of um, different videos and tutorials and read a bunch of things about um, like needle painting, which is basically just about what I did here on the front. It's just blend in colors and make it look like a picture. And that seems beyond my artistic capabilities. Like, I'm sure I can do the stitching if I know where to put them, but my, my sort of drawing and painting and color blending uh, prowess is, I think, not sufficient to do a decent job at like shading something. I think they'll do a single flower petal with like five different colors of thread or something. It's a lot. It's nice though. Uh, I'm also considering stuff like black work, which is a lot closer to doing pixel art. But with lines instead of full pixels. And I like that kind of mathematical, geometric... Thing, so maybe I'll have to do black work sometime. But a lot of people seem to do it on that sort of standard cross stitch fabric, whatever it's called. The one that's essentially laid out in huge squares. Well, not huge, but clearly visible squares. That, I don't know, I'm more interested in making it on a garment. But you'd have to have a fabric where you can clearly see the weave. So you can sort of count the count the squares. Mesh, yeah. The cross stitchy stuff, where you can clearly count all the holes. I want to do stuff on on garments though. Uh, I do have some mesh, but I don't think it has. A clear enough weave. And I th yeah, I think canvas or um, a very loosely woven, exactly, low thread count, linen or cotton, might do it. Like, I'm thinking I will do a new version of my Darcy shirt. Like, I made this white um, Regency-ish men's undershirt for myself. 
and it's it's decent. It'll it'll do for the pictures. But um if I ever make a nice version of it, I want a nice like I want a, a thin loosely woven linen for it instead of the like linen cotton blend whatever I found in the fabric store on sale when I went there. Fabric because it is kind of bulky. And if I get a, a loosely woven linen, I can maybe also do some black work on it. Maybe just like on the cuffs or something, something really subtle. Uh oh, I'm getting stuck. What am I doing? So that seems like something I might want to do. More abstract design embroidery, I think, then doing concrete pictures. Well, I don't know. This is not the right word. Like, there's still going to be concrete pictures, but not realistic ones or properly color blended ones. <laughs> like, no needle painting. Yes. Yes, uh, embroidery of some kind. And I do really like this uh, whole beadwork business. Where you just take your bottles of tiny seed beads and build something out of it. It's much more... I don't know, architectural. Quite like that. But then again, I'm not really um I'm not really a jewelry person. I don't wear brooches or pendants or I just I can't be bothered to put on additional stuff in the morning <laughs> and take additional stuff off in the evening. Like, clothes are enough for me. So, I could do the whole beadwork thing, but what am I going to use it for? That's that's kind of a thing. So I, I will have to come up with a garment that is, like, encrusted in, in precious stones or something. <laughs> because then... No, if it's clothes, then it's useful. Even if it's a dress you're only gonna wear twice. So yeah, maybe beadwork at some point. And what else have we got? LEDs, definitely more LEDs in everything. I think that having to stitch a tiny battery holder like this into a, into a garment is not that obtrusive. Is that the word I was looking for? I don't know. Not that much impeding your ability to wear the garment. So I should definitely do more subtle things like that. Like, I've already got the, the light-up shirt with the whole motion-responsive color scheme, whatever, RGB LED nonsense. But, you know, it's a bit much. But just doing something subtle, like a, a couple of LED sequins here and there on a single single battery. I'll have to test how long the battery lasts, but uh, I can do it on cuffs. Do you mean the the beadwork? Oh yeah. 
I'm also considering whether you can construct a kind of button out of a bunch of beads, but I figure that it'll be really annoying to get through the buttonholes, so... Maybe something that pretends to be a button but actually isn't. Yeah, actually I think I'm more likely now to do some kind of um, applique with beads maybe as well. Just taking a plain corset and then crusting it in a zillion beads. And maybe building some 3D-ish elements on it. Dorset button? What is a dorset button? I should probably Google that. Oh, they're like embroidered. Oh, that makes actually a lot of sense. I had never heard of this, but it looks really neat. There are even ones with like little Christmas trees in them. That's pretty cool. I might have to do that at some point when I'm feeling particularly extra. I'm also very much aware that half of the projects I'm now bringing up as possibilities are probably never going to happen. Because, I don't know, life only has 24 hours in a day. They take forever, but they're worth it. Uh, yeah, it does look like... Like, I remember making those, like, pom-poms where you put some yarn through a cardboard donut and then cut it open. And even just cutting, even just filling up the cardboard donut was so tedious, and I imagine that this is a lot similar, where you have to wrap the entire button in... in, uh, in threads. I'm still smelling the fray check here. It's maybe I went a bit overboard. But the edge is not fraying. How about that though? So hashtag worth it. It's actually feeling pretty secure. I'm not that worried anymore about stuff pulling itself out of the edge of the felt. So I think I'm just gonna finish this um this brooch and then I'm gonna call it a day because I do want to quit streaming at six if I I don't know ah, maybe I can do uh, well pocket maybe maybe do a little bit of something yeah you know what I will stream until six and I will start on the well pocket because having done 15 minutes of work on it is better than having done zero minutes of work on it. So. And I already told myself that I would do the well pocket yesterday and I didn't, so. Kind of owe it to myself.
I'm nearly there. I just need about two centimeters more. And I think I've actually cut a long enough strand that I'm going to make it to the end with it. Which is nice. Also, next month, I should be getting the 3D printer, laser, engraver, CNC router, Snapmaker 2 that I pre-ordered. I hope I get it next month. I haven't heard anything about it yet, but it should should get delivered in, uh, in September. And that's when I'm also looking forward to making, to like 3D printing buttons, potentially. That seems like a thing I might want to do. Or maybe 3D printing a button for the design and then resin casting from that. I don't know. So many possibilities. I'll have to learn 3D modeling first, but, uh, you know, the ambition is there. Okay, I, I've reached the end. Just gonna make a couple extra stitches. And just weave through the edge, I guess. Okay, here we go. It is finished. Oh! Rays of light shining down, sparkles, effects everywhere. I should probably set that up. Uh, so uh, what are these bits sticking out here at the edge? <laughs> what is this? Oh, that's the thread I just cut. Hold on, I can cut that a little bit closer so it doesn't stick out like a sore thumb. Okay, better. Oh, so now theoretically, if I haven't broken anything, I can dun 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 dun. Ta da! <laughs> you you really can't see that, can you? I'm gonna hit the lights. Hold on. Shiny. I really like the, um, it's kind of hard to see. Maybe it's easier to see on that cam. It's slightly better. Um, uh, there is a, there are some slight inconsistencies in the clay that I use to make the cabochon, which are kind of looking like moon craters and like scuffs on the surface. It's kind of nice. So it's looking really nice and glowy. Quite pleased with that. I'm not a, I'm not a hundred percent a brooch person, so I'll have to see how often I end up actually wearing this. But uh, I'm as an experiment and as a as a piece that is now finished, I am reasonably happy with it. It looks quite clean on the back as well. I'm a little bit bothered by the fact that the pin is not perfectly centered. And it's a little bit, it seems a little bit lopsided somehow, but ah, it is cute, right? I um, 
Let's rate this out of five stars. Well, it's already got two stars on it. But <laughs> dad jokes aside, uh, given that I'm not that much of a brooch person, I would still give this three stars, three and a half stars out of five. Is that <laughs> stick it on a hat? Oh yeah, that that could. Oh, you could use it as like one of those super steampunky, like in the middle of a top hat sort of things, right? Like on the. Ooh, wait, hold on. I have a top hat. Wait, 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 wait. Stuff is happening now. So, I have not worn this hat in ages, and I hope that when I open the box it's not all spiders and, and stuff in there. Uh, Alright, looks good. Ta-da! It's a bit big for me as well. I just bought it secondhand. But, um, <laughs> what if there is a, a sort of a fabric band on the edge? that you could potentially stick this into, right? See if I've got enough height though. See, this is, wait, what is the front? Wait. So people who know top hats, the, the top hat has this little bow thingy in it and a label. And I think the bow thingy should go on the back of my head, right? So that, I'm looking at it like this, I can read the text, and I put it on like that. I think that adds up. So, let's see if I can pin this on here. I'll have to pin it on upside down, so it's a little bit awkward. In terms of, like, the, the, the sort of sky design that I've got won't make sense anymore, because it'll be upside down. But, um... It's a bit fiddly. The pin doesn't want to come out once they... <laughs> okay. Uh, I'll have to work on the uh, the pinning system, but I guess I could... Whoop. <laughs> can go into the middle. Here. I am a moon magician. <laughs> Oh god. Uh, I'm not sure this is going to be a hit, but I, I can be sort of a steampunky magician if I want to. Alright. Let's try it as a... Let's try it as a brooch. Well, it works. <laughs> All right, let's flip the camera up so you, actually you can see a slightly bigger picture. Right, hold up. I have to move you around a bit and it's going to be noisy and I'm sorry. Is my lamp blinking? Thank you. It's uh, it's kind of cool. Let's get a little bit more lighting here. Actually, I would wear that. I think to some sort of special occasion type deal. I think I would. And then in the dark. Yeah, I'm not too uh, too displeased with that. Let's put you back over the table. All right, so I guess I'm gonna keep this on for now. I'm gonna clean up a little bit and then 
see if for the next 14 minutes I can get some stuff done on my uh, my waistcoat. <laughs> but first, it's beads everywhere. Oh god. I've also got to think about what I'm gonna what I'm gonna stream next week. I think it's unlikely that I will have totally finished the waistcoat, but there's only so much um, stitching of the lining that is exciting for people to watch. So I'm not sure it's going to be that. I have a, another project in mind of a jacket. It's basically a jacket I saw online and really liked, but the buttons were off center and it bothered the crap out of me, so I didn't want to buy it. But I still have to order fabric for that. I'm not entirely sure yet. I don't have the pattern drafted, so I'm not quite sure that that's going to happen next week. Also, I'm going to be visiting a friend next weekend, so there might not be a stream. <laughs> uh, <laughs> sorry. Uh, I'll figure out what I'm going to do with next week's stream. And if there is going to be one, I'm going to upload the YouTube event or like create the YouTube event for it uh, on Friday at the latest. So if you if you want to know on Saturday morning, you can check whether there's a, a stream event on my YouTube page or not. And if you don't care, then that's fine too. So, maybe stream next week. Not sure what it's going to be. Not sure whether there is one. And then after that, I will go back to weekly streams. Alright, more beads. More lids. I think that's everything. Get all these out of the way. Oh, whoops. So I got. Yep. Alright. Soldering stuff. And my filthy sponge. So, waistcoat. Where were we? And where did I put it? So, a couple of weeks ago, I started making this waistcoat. It's currently, it currently doesn't have the shoulder seams in it, so I can't put it on. But basically, it's gonna be kind of like a Regency waistcoat with this ridiculously high uh, collar. That's all been prepared, but I want to add the collar as the last thing, even after the lining has been put in. But before I can do the lining, I need to put in the welt pocket. I just sort of put it on this morning, uh, or yesterday morning, and put my hand where I figured it should go. So I've got it all marked and prepared. I've got... I've got it marked here with threads. I've got it um, interfaced with a little bit of iron-on disfusable interfacing to stiffen it up a little bit, and I've got the pockets cut. So what theoretically should happen now is that... Um, see, one of these two doesn't actually need its top edge. So, this is going to be a hole, and then behind the hole we get a pocket like, not like this, like that. And the back of it will just be like this, and this will be stitched to the top edge of that. And the front piece will go on and get folded back like this so that 
you will be basically the hole will be here and like stuff goes in the bucket like this so that's the plan um basically it means that i have to stay stitch uh let's see this edge exactly to this and this edge exactly to that and then cut this open and flip the whole thing inside and i will need to check everything like three times to make sure i'm doing it the right way around that's part of the deal <laughs> so first i'm just gonna mark where exactly it should go on so if this is the back piece this this these markings are useless and i'm gonna remove them before i actually use them for anything because that goes there and if i stitch it on like this stitch 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 cut it open flip it inwards end up there I think that's correct. So that should go on like that. And then the other one should end up like this. So it gets stitched like that. I think like this along the top line. You could stitch, stitch, flip it backwards, ends up upside down. And then it folds back behind itself to end up correct. Yeah, that's it. So it goes on. <laughs> the hole in the coat seems smaller than the pockets. Oh yeah, this not the entire width is the is the hole. Basically, on the pattern here, which the camera will focus on shortly, uh, here you can see I've marked the hole, and the pockets are extending a bit beyond it, just to give it a bit more wiggle room. So I'm gonna mark the ends of the hole uh, on the fabric shortly. I'm just gonna start with the top, top one, because that's less confusing, and I will have to talk myself through how it's gonna stitch and then flip several times so let's just let's just start with this one um yeah i will i will iron the crap out of it thanks diana uh, let's make sure i've got these ends marked all right so Pocket ends here and here. So once again, this is going to be the piece that goes on the back. It's going to stitch like this, flip back like that. Yeah, that seems to add up. Um. How would you mean? Well, pockets differently. Am I doing something wrong? I'm I'm doing the um, like the single welt thing. I'm I'm not doing the um, the thing where it's got two strips, like one coming from the top and one from the bottom. I'm doing one where you've got a square gap and then just one thing coming from the bottom to cover it. If that makes any sense. Wait, I'll just, I'll just find a picture. Let's put on the screen sharing for a sec and see whether I can find what I mean. So I want to do one that's like this. Can we get this a bit bigger? Where you've got just a bit coming in from the bottom. And for, I don't know, Convenience sake, this is also going to be the front part of the, the inner pocket. It just sort of, it starts here, folds back on itself, like goes up, folds backwards, and then 
goes down and becomes the pocket. If that makes sense. So, I think I want to stitch this from the back so I can stitch exactly along the, the stuff that I've marked. Let's, oops, let's put that back on screen. But where are we? So I want to stitch this from the back so I can use these exact markings. Because you have to stop exactly on the end. Otherwise, when you clip it, it doesn't, like, fold back in correctly. So I'm going to just poke a pin there. Wait, it does look bigger. Am I crazy? Oh no, it checks out. Alright. I'm gonna just hold it like this now that I know it's in place and pin it from this side first. Then I'm gonna go back and pin it from the other side. Just to... Because that's the side I'll be stitching from. Just wanna not move it when I flip it over. Alright. Now, let's secure it from this side. This is the one I definitely know for sure how to do. And then the, the bottom one will be a bit... I'll have to talk my way through it to convince myself that I'm doing it right. Oops. I think I need to be a bit more over there. Okay. Alright. I'm gonna just go for it. Because why not? Let's get the sewing machine out. I think I unplugged it as well when I plugged in the iron- the soldering iron. Okay, so stitching the what's going to be the back of the pocket into into the into the top of the hole. I'll take a quite a short stitch length, like I don't know one and a half millimeters or something. And make sure I start exactly where I need to and don't go any further than the corner. That is a pin that I hit because I thought I could do it.
I got there. Um, it doesn't want to... Oh, there we go. It was a little bit stuck, but not that much stuck. Alright, I just realized that the laptop was like right in front of my face. So let me just move you aside for a sec. Okay. So, in theory... Ah, <laughs> that's why the last bit was so tedious. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, that's just folded over and got stitched under to it, under itself. Yep, yep, yep. Good stuff. I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to take that out. Ah, I was already wondering why it felt so much heavier the last bit. Nope, nope, nope. And here I am with my nice tiny stitch length and my super duper back stitching. <laughs> uh, yeah, whoops. I always do that though. It's um it's sort of part of the part of the process. I just hope I can get it out without damaging anything. Well, I don't know. I've got enough fabric if I need to cut an additional pocket. I'm not sure I have enough fabric if I need to cut an additional front piece. <laughs> Please just come out. I didn't mean to. There we are. Okay. Let's... I did stitch nice and like right on the line where I should have though. It was good. <laughs> if only it had stayed that way. Okay. Yep, let's try that again. Ah, this is of course how it happened when I slid it under the machine like that. Able to fold it over on itself. Alright. Triple checking that it's not folded over this time. Seems like we're good. Oh, and I pulled the thread out of the needle. Oops. All right, let's try that again. should do it. That's better. <laughs> okay, so when we cut this open, this flips like that and ends up being the back of the pocket. That works. Also means I can trim this back quite a lot. So let's cut that away. Okay. 
now the part where I convince myself that I'm putting on the bottom correctly. So. First things first, it needs to end up oriented like this, and not like that. So, ends up like this, hold it over like that, stitched here first, to there. So, when it flips into the pocket, it goes like this. So this is how I should stitch it down. Does it make sense that both of them are facing upwards when I stitch them? You have this crazy loosely woven linen under the machine and it's worse than chiffon. Oh yes. I mean, it just... Is it the feed dogs that are just sort of not getting a good grip on it? Or what is it? Or is it just fraying like crazy? So I think it's correct that both of the pockets are flipped up when I stitch them. Because one of them gets folded back once and the other gets folded over on itself as well. So this one gets folded twice so it makes sense. Right? Yes. Yes. Alright. So let's also... And this needs to be marked along the the bleh. it needs to be marked all the way over here because that's what's going to get stitched in to the front and then the rest is going to get folded back and this will end up this will end this will end up stitched in goes up goes back down stitch here Yes. Okay. Um, the one in the back should the uh, is attached to the top, but the one in the front is attached to the bottom, then goes up to the top, and then comes back down again. So that's why the one at the bottom is actually longer. I even changed needles, but it still pulls the thread in every direction. Oh. That's... That's a nightmare. I'm not really sure what to do about that, honestly. I'm not, uh... Sort of a how-to-deal-with-annoying-fabrics expert. But maybe... Use a... I don't know. Nah. I can't think of anything. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, yeah, so I need to extend these lines so I've got these points. That's, that's where I was going. So, there goes like that. And like that. And then that needs to be chalked onto here. So where are we? Okay. I think I'm doing this correctly. But like, thanks for... Thanks for asking that stuff about shouldn't the back one be longer and, and, and that sort of stuff because that is exactly the kind of stuff where I would screw it up. And having to explain why it isn't the case is actually helping me to not screw it up, if that makes sense. It makes me double check my own work. So, thanks! Oh yeah, that's, that's really annoying, Shania. It's just... Having to deal with annoying fabrics. <laughs> Alright, I think I've got it lined up, but it's 
Uh, I think I need to trim the top a little bit more so it doesn't interfere with the line that I'm about to stitch. Whoops. All right, um, let's spin it from the back. Why does this seem longer than the actual jacket? Like this is, this can't be right. Oh, it can't be right because it isn't and I put the needle in the wrong spot. Yay for double checking. Uh, okay. Did I say I put the needle in the wrong spot? I meant pin. It is getting quite bulky. I, I kind of considered whether I wanted to make the... the back part out of the lining fabric instead of the main fabric because it's quite thick. I decided against it, but now I'm not sure that that was the correct call. I... Wait, what am I... how... what? I've poked this through the wrong spot so many times. Alright. That should be it. Really bunching up underneath. Stop doing that. Okay, I think I've got the corners lined up now. I'm just gonna wiggle this a bit, make sure it's nice and taut. I'm worried about the orientation of the bottom one. Will it turn inward properly? I, 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 I'm gonna talk through it one more time to convince myself, but I think I did it right. So it's gonna turn inward. Uh, wait, let me finish pinning it. I'm gonna mime it with the pattern piece, I think, because that'll make more sense. Uh, because this can't move now. So it's gonna get cut open here. So this piece is gonna flip like that, which is gonna be, here is gonna be. So it's gonna flip in like this, and at that point be attached at the top edge only. Then I'm gonna be folding it on itself, and it'll go behind itself like this, and come up like that. And I think that's gonna be it. So I think I got it. If I don't, I'll, I'll pick it out again. Oh, thank you. I really like the color as well. Like, I didn't even mean to make... Um, I was more looking for something with a print or a, or a sort of slight pattern in the, in the fabric. Uh, but I, I saw this and I just really liked it, so... So oh, I, I, I feel that doing those sort of snap buys where you're like, I want this one, is usually the thing that you're going to end up liking the most. And honestly, it's also the, those sort of snap buys where I get the most compliments from random strangers. Like the, the, the shoes that I saw in the store and just thought, shut up and take my money, are the ones that old ladies at the bus stop compliment me on, you know?
Okay, I think I did it. Let's see if I didn't fold it over and get it stuck on something. No, it looks good. All right, let's cut it open and see whether I got it correct. Um, I'm just gonna mark this from the back. I don't wanna be cutting down the middle and towards the corners, leave a nice flap. Maybe a slightly bigger flap, something like that. All right, let's go for it. It's very thick. Let's see, am I gonna cut through anything that I need if I'm not careful? I think I am. So let's, let's spin these out of the way before I like cut through them. So these are gonna stay down here and this is going to stay up so I don't cut pieces out of them. I need a, I need a knife, that's what I need. Oh, this fabric is really thick. Hello? <laughs> Why am I not making it through the other side? Oh, I am, but only very slightly. I'm gonna, I'm gonna put it on a cutting mat and just try to slice it. I just need to get a big enough hole that I can put my scissors through. Okay, I got there, I think. Yep. I'm gonna be a little bit conservative in cutting towards the corners. Maybe I'll need to cut it a bit more when I fold it back, but I don't know how much it's gonna tear or otherwise mess with me. Okay, now let's see whether the magic made sense. So, the back pocket, the back thing, goes in. And sits like that. That's gonna need some pressing, but it's sitting where you want it to. And then the front, goes in like this. Um, no, I think I did do it wrong. Wait, am I? Or do I need to pull it through further? No, I think I did do it backwards. Because this is supposed to go up and over itself now. I said, yep, yeah, no, I did screw it up. You were correct. I got it wrong. <laughs> uh, uh, uh. Yep, yep. The long bit needs to be attached there. So it can fold over. Yeah, actually it needs to be, I thought I was gonna get an extra fold. Wait. 
matter. It clearly needs to be the other way around. So I'm gonna unpick it and redo it. Good stuff. Uh, so if I yeah, the stuff with the most fabric needs to end up there. But it does nip them. Stitch like this. Flip like that. Fold back like this. That's what it should be. Yep! Ha! Uh, it's not my first pocket ever. Uh, I've done like the um, the traditional belt pockets with the two flappy thingies, like one coming from the top and one coming from the bottom. But you've just got two symmetrical strips, and then you attach the pocket pieces entirely separately from that. And like, well, honestly, if I had done one of these before, I would have probably forgotten how to do it anyway. So. I would have probably still screwed it up. I was... I think I confused myself on the fact that... Stuff would need to happen on the back of the fabric. I skipped one, one mental rotation. But hey, there is always the seam ripper to help out in need. Yeah, I th like I looked at a bunch of tutorials for this just to sort of wrap my head around it, and then as you, I thought it made sense, and it clearly I've like cut and marked the pieces correctly. So when I was when I was drafting it, it made sense. I just like still get it wrong. Okay, let's try not to distort. Like Obviously I've now already cut open this bit, so I need to be a little bit careful about not distorting the fabric too much. Because I need to get it back in exactly the same spot. Just flipped over. Are the side triangles going to be attached to the welt then? Yeah, exactly. So the... Um... It's going to be attached both to the back pocket and to the flappy bit that comes up. Those should all like lie flat on top of each other and get attached to the triangles. Why is it coming out so poorly? Come on, little seam ripper. You can do it. I feel like I've already gotten quite a few stitches out, but it's still so tight. I think uh, I'm gonna just... I'm getting a bit hungry and it's like 6.30. So I'm gonna unpick this 
pin it on the correct way, now that I am temporarily aware of what the correct way is. Because I'm fairly sure that if I put this down and come back to it, I will screw it up again. Pin it on the correct way, and then call it a day and make some dinner. That seems like a solid plan. Hello, please come out. I'm getting there. This is just the back stitching on this start now that needs to come out. There we are. The pieces are separate once more. Try to get all the fluff out. Okay! Attempt number two. So, it needs to end up like this and like that. with this attached to that. How am I still ending up on putting it like that even though I know that that's not correct? Oh wait, yeah, you put it like that and then you fold this back. Yes. Okay. Gotcha. So let's put the markings on this side as well. Let's do it. And you are going to go in the corner of the bottom. Put that over. I'm glad that I didn't cut that far into the corners yet. <laughs> it means I can still reliably pin to it. This pin is crap. Actually, I'm not just going to pin it right, I'm going to stitch it, confirm that it's correct now, and then make dinner. That would make more sense.
It's getting into a bit of a fight with the other piece. I'm gonna trim that a bit more. Hello, what's happening? Neat that I can look through the hole now, though, to see whether I'm lining it up correctly. <laughs> There's some surplus sides to screwing it up. Uh -uh. Okay, here we go. Make sure it's not folded over. Everything is right. Everything is fine. Everything's cool. should be it then. This is where I demo the fact that it works without embarrassing myself a second time. So, the back goes in like this and just hangs out there for a bit. And the front goes like this and folds on and then the, the front should come back up this is going to be really thick by the way so i think it's going to be a little bit of a struggle to stitch it, to stitch it to the triangles but with enough clipping should fold back like this and function as a pocket like so stuff stuff goes in here Ha ha! Checks out. Okay. Got there. In the end. Yeah, I, I really like the interfacing. That's a... Uh, sorry. Uh, oh yeah. I, I thought you said something else, but it was your previous comment. So, with that, I'm gonna leave and make some dinner. And I may or may not be back next week. If I haven't put up um, a sort of stream, like upcoming stream on my YouTube channel on Saturday morning, then I will not be back. Uh, if I did, then I will be there. So thank you all for hanging out and um, and watching me complete my, um, where is it? My moon brooch and giving me all the advice and <laughs> trying to warn me about the fact that I was going to screw up my pocket and then... I didn't get it. <laughs> so uh, I'll see you next time, whether that's next week or the week after. Uh, thanks for, uh, for hanging out with me.